Now be like shocked, like have your hands over your face, like you're as emotional as you can be. So like have your hand reaching for it and then like be like shocked, like you're, yeah. Act a little surprised. Like be like really shocked with your mouth open. Now, a few days ago, Mr. Ava was exposed when he was 20 years old. He was with 14, 15 euros on a Discord call, holding hands and having a masturbation party. And as most of you are aware, Mr. Beast finally dropped a statement saying, Mr. Ava was so disgusting. I was not aware of this. I had no idea this was happening. But don't, do not worry. Mr. Ava is fired and is no longer with us. I hired a lawyer. Uh, I hired the investigator. And we are going to get on top of this, basically. That is where, like, in the past few days, there has been exposition after exposition. Everyone's just dropping accusations with evidence out of their asshole, and it truly is a judgment day for all YouTubers. One specific accusation stood out where he was a former uh, Mr. Beast employee, where he came forward and said everything that Mr. Ava did, Jimmy knew about it. And it is just the tip of the iceberg. There is more to it. My name is Dawson. I worked at Mr. Beast from February to May of this year, 2024. Chris is the, the tip of the iceberg and when Jake the Viking says Mr. Beast knew yeah Mr. Beast knew um, I heard many times that Ava Chris Tyson is a major liability but they can't get rid of her because she's already threatened legal action and she knows too much and when all this information comes out about everything that she knew everything other people know I promise you on everything Mr. Beast has done. Now, after all the accusations with all the evidence that's been coming out and then, you know, Jimmy dropping that statement, Mr. Ava saying I'm stepping down to focus on my mental health and shit. It's, things are becoming believable. There are not uh, accusations anymore. And when he said this the first time that there is more to it, this is just the tip of the iceberg. First thing came into my mind, I was like, holy shit. Mr. Beast is into some freaky shit and they have orgy parties at Mr. Beast's company. They finish up a video. Hey guys, we just cured 1,000 deaf, blind, handicapped people. And then once it's all done, all right guys, it's a wrap. Chocolate orgy party at my place. But it just turned out four days ago where this guy dropped a whole 52 minute deep investigation for months, if not a year of exposing every single thing about mr beast all the way from faking his videos everything is rigged and planned the winners are handpicked he's promoting gambling to children no one's talking about and he doesn't actually care about you know helping people out he's not a selfless person he cares about money more than the people he helps it's a very uh, deep video we're not going to go through all of it we're just going to go through the main part starting off with the fake cgi videos i remember when i first started seeing your videos i was like this shit's got to be fake oh yeah like, it's a huge so, problem for us now i actually have to dial back my content sometimes just so people think it's real but also if, if what we had to film was scripted you know because what we do is non-scripted so you have to plan for a bunch of variables that you can't control blah blah if what we did was scripted Holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Have you ever faked a video? No. But this train track is CGI, these bus wheels are CGI, this explosion is fake, this shredder is CGI, this car is digitally lifted, this pit is fake, this guy is fake, uh, this raccoon is a paid actor, this island costs more than a dollar, this city is not abandoned, these buildings are CGI, but it's not your only way out, you can literally get an Uber to the airport for $20. That's not a lurker. It's just a guy. This whole room is fake. This contestant is an actor and a secret employee at Mr. Beast. They had him die through this fake door twice. This line is scripted. This action is scripted. Uh, in fact, pretty much all the videos with Mac are scripted. You did it! Yeah! What we did was scripted. Holy shit. Now, I don't think anyone from my community, meaning adults, really care if it's CGI or not. Yes, it adds a little bit of spice to it. That's fine. But only the little Timmies are going to go like, no, Mr. Beast. I can't believe this whole thing is fake. I trusted you. Now I have trust issues and I can never trust another creator again. I don't think it really matters. It adds a little bit of intensity to it. He also came out and he showed the behind the scenes of the, what was that? Uh, the Squid Games that happened. We all know that they're not going to take them like with their tug of war game. We all know they're kind of not going to take them all the way up and risk their lives and all that shit. Obviously, there's going to be, it's going to be on the ground, but there's, there's green screens behind it and they're going to CGI that shit to make it intense. But one thing I got to say that I'm really disappointed is that near death experiences where people are doing some, you know, freaky ass challenges. I'm disappointed in that because you got to put the risk if you want to win that million dollar price. Second thing he mentioned are those, we are stuck in an island, we have no food, I don't know what to do, I'm buried for five days. He comes out and he says that 
these are actually not true. Jimmy is chilling, smoking his shisha, drinking his coffee. And, you know, once they're like, production, light, sound, he goes in the coffin and he's like, action, I can't believe my body is so tired. And, you know, all this shit. During this time lapse on the fourth day of seven days stranded at sea, you can clearly see there's no one in the shelter. These are their empty beds. But after a hard cut, magically five people are awake and two of the boys have bright yellow raincoats that they didn't have when it rained on day two. And after standing the whole night completely soaked, you didn't spend the night soaked, Jimmy, you slept on the production yacht. It's ironic because this is one of the videos where they claim that they don't fake things. But no, we have to be the real channel that doesn't fake things. In this video, this wink was added in post. In fact, 58 was actually on the far opposite side of the room from 42 and he just didn't hear him. This whole revenge storyline was added in post. Multiple shots show how timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. They also manipulated contestants' audio in post. So we got fifth in mana. In general, if anything happens last second, it's fake. Or if you can hear someone's voice but can't see their mouth, the audio could easily be added in post. I literally think I'm gonna kill you. And yes, this lie detector video was also fake. Have you ever faked a video? No. Fake that lie. Uh, it's still real to me, damn it! Now usually when people come forward and say these things are fake, we were treated horribly in this and just accused of Jimmy of doing horrible things. This happened multiple times in the past few years, but it doesn't have any traction. Once a video goes viral and everyone starts talking, Talking about it that is when you know people point uh, people out now this slightly ruins his image because the next time i'm watching mr beast video i know that he's not in an island stock he's chilling in his production yacht and it just ruins the whole experience now if i tell you the first time i watched the buried videos do did i believe it i was like no why is mr beast stuck there for like five to seven days well, he has other shit to do. Who would want to do this to themselves? But at the same time, I was like, okay, Mr. Beast is a huge challenge guy. He likes to do intense things and he likes to entertain his audience. And he goes all the way in in his videos. Well, after watching this whole video covered by this dog pack guy, yeah, th just watching another Mr. Beast video is just not going to be the same. Now, this is the part where the real exposition starts. And this is the part that really pissed me off, where Jimmy handpicks his winners. And for some reason, surprise, surprise, most of the winners are the same people or they're huge creators. <laughs> you did it! Yeah! What we did was scripted. Holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Let's talk about Mac for a second. I found public records showing that Mac moved from California to Greenville, North Carolina, where Jimmy is located, back in August 2023, two months before he appeared as a contestant. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, this is around the time when Mac started working full-time on the editing team at Mr. Beast. Also, he didn't just move into any old house, he moved into a million-dollar mansion. What are you gonna spend the $800,000 on? I mean, my life's changed now. Yeah, I'm sure that $800,000 is really gonna change your life. Max is a nice car. Tell me, where are we right now? Uh, we're in the place that uh, we drove to a few months ago. Uh, Mac, let's, let's cut the shit here. What have you been doing for like the last year? A lot of family stuff. What kind of family stuff? Just mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, playing catch with my dad, you know? For a year? What do you, how do you make money? <laughs> How are you, uh, like, surviving? Basically, my, my main strategy is I, I go to, like, a uh, like grocery store type places. Grocery store type places? <laughs> yeah, and I basically, I basically, what I'll do when I get there, I usually like, get, like, like a, an amount of food that would take me for, like, a week or so, right? With, with what money? The money that I've made. How did you make it? Huh? Where? Yeah, well, listen, you're getting too caught up in the details. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. <laughs> so, like, did they just pocket the money or what? Hey, it's the pilot guy. Wait, he's about to be the first one out? That's unlike him. Even though you got out first, I still have a prize for you. Just wait here. <laughs> oh, first person out gets a car and it just happened to be your friend Mac. Now, the reason why all these videos are so entertaining to watch is because a random person, a completely random person who just left their job, left their family for like a month just to be participating in this game and have a chance to win. And what makes it interesting is to see that, that random person win some money. But if you give it to your own editor, Mr. Beast. And now that I think of it, I've seen this donkey many times just popping up in Mr. Beast's video. He had the ninja activity challenge where he won. Now he wins a Tesla. Then he wears a fucking $800,000. $800,000 on. I've got three friends of mine, childhood friends of mine. And they don't have a lot of money. I'm gonna make sure they don't have to worry about money anymore. I mean, my life's changed now. Congrats, man. You it's deserve it. Forever, bro. You deserve it. Dude, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. There's also a very good looking TikToker with a mustache as well. He keeps on wedding Mr. Beast. God knows if he is working for Mr. Beast now or not. 
This just ruins the whole experience. You need to give it to random people. They CGI, but who really cares? I mean, the videos are just for entertainment only, right? I mean, it's not like he's ever rigged the results of a challenge. That would be impossible because he films with hundreds of random subscribers, right? Wrong. Let's look at this video. Not only were the results of this video completely scripted, but the contestants are not random subscribers. So many people had jobs. Oh, that contestant had to get out for her job? I guess you forgot she's your hiring manager. I actually recognize a lot of people in this video, including Jimmy's own girlfriend. So yeah, the random subscribers you see in challenges are actually never random. They're almost always local to Mr. Beast and oftentimes friends and family of Mr. Beast employees or just the employees themselves. And when they do pull someone from outside of North Carolina, it's usually somebody who's in the industry, who's camera trained, who has built a following. They are never random subscribers. If you subscribe, you will not win a million dollars. And what's even worse is that the results of this video were completely scripted. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, it would have been a PR problem if the boys had won by a lot. And because so many of the female contestants were Mr. Beast employees who got out immediately, production stepped in to actually make the results of the challenge closer. Uh, you can actually see some of this happen on camera, like when Jimmy pays one of the boys $10,000 to leave, which is twice as much as the actual prize money, uh, but doesn't make the same offer to the girls. The boys were blowing you out of the water. I paid the one guy who knew how to solve them to leave. Now if you don't win, that was all for nothing. At another point, he gives the girls a camera drone so they would have been able to see how many boys were left. It doesn't work out, but seeing how much they're willing to help them on camera, I'm willing to believe that they did, in fact, help them off camera. You know, apparently at the end, they were only monitoring the boys to see if they stepped on the red line and not the girls so that the girls would win the challenge. And to be clear, obviously the girls had an unfair start with having so many Mr. Beast employees get out immediately. You know, I think they all did deserve $5,000 for that, but also the boys should deserve a fair chance at winning, I think. I think that's the expectation when you run a game show. I swear to God, one day if I get big on YouTube and I get on a Mr. Beast video, I am interviewing every single person over there to see if they're related or not. And I'll be microscoping the shit out of these people to see if anyone's being a favorite or not and multiple people who were the contestants in their in a mr beast video they came forward and started exposing mr beast of such a horrible experience that they have illegal shit them not being able to take med medications them not being able to sleep because they have to shoot a 3000 hour video they have to stay away from their families they one person came forward and said that I had to take my drugs. I couldn't. I couldn't even sleep. I literally, I'm homeless. They offered me $1,000 to participate in this game. I had to leave all my life behind. We had to go through training. And they say in four months, you're going to get paid. And then she said that everything just got canceled. The whole video got canceled and they just let everyone go. Leaving aside that part, but that not being able to take care of the people that you bring into your like factory on stage, the people are going to be on shoot. They need to get the maximum treatment in this and that woman also said that they are not even receiving water people are fighting for food and all that shit and also another creator who has almost 15 million subs she came forward and said how everything is just so rigged in my mind i'm thinking it's a fair game but it's not if they were having problems finding people they can see kind of what area you're in uh, mm and they came to my area many times and i was in the smallest cupboard <laughs> they had like big ones medium ones and small ones i contorted this little four foot ten body into the smallest space and i was in there for hours <laughs> and they didn't even open the door because they were like a person can't even fit in there so they went in oh there and they God. opened all the cabinets and my heart was like oh they're gonna find me they're gonna find me <laughs> And then I could hear them saying, like, she's not here. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, she's not here. <laughs> the other thing that they said is absolutely no climbing in the air vents or the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And they said it's because they do all their wiring in mm -hmm. the ceiling. So I am up here. Okay, I feel good about this spot. If it was held accountable, especially because this was a YouTube original production, mm. Zach would have been eliminated for cheating. He broke the rules and guarantee you if i claimed if i climbed in the ceiling mr beast would eliminate me he was in the ceiling so it turns out even if you're the winner in that competition you're not going to win the person who's going to win in the competition is the person who has the 
most energetic, most best reaction on things. Oh my God, no way! Things like that, and you're going to win. The PR team is going to spank you out of that stage, and you're going to be out of the competition. And if a person breaks a rule in a game, but if they're energetic and the reaction is on point, which makes, which makes the video intense, you are going to win no matter what. So if you go in a Mr. Beast video one day, just make sure you're like, I show speed, overreacting to things and giving everyone a show. I swear to God, if I go in a Mr. Beast video and I see shit is rigged, I'm throwing hands. I'm not even kidding. One million dollars. And the reason why most people don't talk about their experience, first of all, no one's going to believe them when, he, when you compare it to Mr. Beast. Second of all, they sign an NDA, which you are not allowed to speak of anything that happens. God knows what's that in that NDA, but I'm pretty sure they're not allowed to speak of the way they're being treated. Now, if I'm in that situation, I don't care. I'm throwing hands. If it's an NDA, I'm signing. Fuck that. I'll be like, I identify as a 15-year-old, and then I can break that NDA, and I can just talk about it and absolutely shit on these people because... This is not it. The next Mr. Beast video I'm watching, 30 seconds in, I see who the contestants are. I'm going to click off because, first of all, I know his besties, his editors are going to win in the competition. And the guy with the... It's just... It ruins the whole experience. The guy with the most overreaction, he's going to be winning the whole situation as well. So, Mr. Beast... Maybe after this, try to make things authentic and maybe there's a chance of you still, people still being interested in your videos. A call to action is simply when you tell the viewer to do something, saying subscribe is a call to action. Early in his career, Mr. Beast found a better version of this where he takes a call to action and he adds positive or negative reinforcement to it. Now, as adults, we can recognize that subscribe for a cookie is a joke. Uh, it's not a real offer, but again, Mr. Beast's audience is primarily children. If you guys want to win a brand new PS5, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel. I can't believe people are still doing fucking giveaways. Holy <laughs> shit, it's so annoying. Stop this fucking shit. I'm so tired of it. Fucking 10 years of YouTube, people are still like buying subs with this shit. So over the next seven days, I'm gonna be giving a thousand random people that subscribe a free Samsung Galaxy S24. How Dark, is this legal? I don't get it. All I'm you have to do is subscribe to your channel. All you have to do to enter to win one of these phones is subscribe. It's a scam. Holy shit. I literally spent over a million dollars on these phones. And we literally found him one minute before Zach. I spent over a million dollars on these phones. All you have to do to enter is hit that subscribe button. Samsung, I just want you to love me. For, for those of you who are just joining, if you buy one of our limited edition uh, 40 mil special shirts, we're celebrating 40 million subscribers with a really big video, then we will sign that shirt and some of them will get random prizes like this. In 10 minutes, right, because we gotta give them time to, to do their cart, we'll give two orders $500 each. Five minutes, someone's getting three grand in their someone, order. In five minutes, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put $1,000 in a random order. Two minutes, newest order, gets two thousand dollars so basically what he's saying is mr beast doesn't care about his audience he just knows how to play with your minds especially when it comes to kids i'm giving away thousand iphones i'm giving away five thousand teslas i'm giving away mansions yachts private jets whatever and all you have to do is press that subscribe button and in this competition giveaway live stream that they were doing they're like oh if you buy a merch which is 42 dollars a mr beast t-shirt you will have a chance to win ten thousand dollars or whatever the fuck he's giving out for so many so much money now when he comes out and he says i'm giving away thousand phones when i spend one million dollars of my own money on it Big cap. I actually watched that video live. Why is it a big cap? Because this is how creator, influencer, whatever giveaways work. In Mr. B's situation, he's giving out Samsung phones. Is he actually giving it out? Maybe, maybe not. But is he paying it with his own money? Fuck no. Who would spend $1 million and give it out to people? It is a brand collaboration where Samsung gives them money. To, they, he even gets paid to promote this shit and says, here's a thousand phones and just give it out to people. And honestly, anyone falls for these call for actions. Win this, win that if you subscribe. All you have to do is subscribe, share, like, comment, and all these things. You are a donkey if you fall for these things. It's just like a scammer calling you, hey, you just won $500,000. All you have to do is give me the OTP of the SMS and they're going to basically empty your bank account. And what Mr. Beast basically does is he comes out, he calls for all these fancy things that he gives out to people. All you have to do is subscribe to be a part of it and people fall for it. He's basically buying 
subscribers. And in this video, Mr. Former employee of Mr. B says that people pay $32 to buy this t-shirt and every one person per 1,600 people are going to win a prize. So basically, Mr. Beast is losing $50,000, but he is making a revenue of $1.6 million. And in his point of view and in everyone's point of view, oh my God, Mr. Beast loves us so much and he's giving out so much to people. This is the part where I really get disappointed in Mr. Beast and I question all the things that he's done helping people out is it his money is it the sponsor's money does he actually care about people because the way this is coming out is he cares about making money and later on in this video he go he goes on and he promotes gambling to children why to put money in his own pocket so the wholesome mr beast that we knew that i saved this many people i do this and that Turns out he cares more than money. He's not a selfless person. He cares about that moolah, that chunk in his bank account. He's not that person who lives a simple life, doesn't have a fancy car, doesn't live in mansions, but he gives all his money to everyone because that's the picture that is painted for us. But it turns out that God knows Mr. Beast goes is a pimp at night with bitches bringing everyone and doing fancy shit with his money having a mansion having this and that but next day after pimping he's like hey guys i've been working on this video for six months now i'll be giving 100 fatherless children daddies another thing that just annoys me is jimmy constantly says during these live streams that he's just doing this for fun because he loves giving things away oh and i just like giving away stuff it's kind of funny imagine you just lost a bunch of money at the casino and the owner comes out and he says Guys, the reason I do all this, I just love giving away money. Uh, also, you're seven years old in that example. It's insane that he can flip these massively profitable illegal lotteries targeted towards children as a, an act of generosity. So I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to go place an order at shopmrbeast.com, anyone watching any of the lives. And um, we're gonna throw iPhones in some of them. This is just absolutely crazy. All these years I thought Mr. Beast is a self person who only cares about other people who doesn't care about having any money in his pocket that's a page that's a picture he painted for himself if he actually was spending money for himself and he was you know showing that he lives a good life and he likes to make money it would be completely fine but this is a strategy that a lot of streamers and youtubers use i call it the I'm just a simple guy like you strategy where they will have something old. For example, something as simple as having a very old, I don't know, fucked up chair or having a really messed up house, living inside a house and be like, guys, I make so much money, but I'm such a simple person. I'm so humble. And then once the stream ends, let's get out of this fucking place. We're, let's go, guys. I'm gonna go back to my uh, fifty dollar, hundred dollar, million dollar mansion in New York. I think it is absolutely fine if you make so much money from YouTube and you can, you know, go live your lifestyle. Do not hide it from your audience and do not pretend to be a humble person and all these things. But when you pretend like you're living an average life, even though you're not, like for example, Jinxy buying a Honda Civic, even though we know he drives a Porsche 911 or something, Lamborghini or something. It's just pathetic. Just live your life. No need to hide this shit from your audience just for them to be like, oh my God, such a humble person. We made the right person famous. And another important thing he mentioned in this situation is Mr. Beast promoting illegal gambling. Children uh, who are also being introduced to gambling. The only people who benefit off of sweepstakes are influencers and scammers. Remember Wizza, a sweepstakes company that got exposed as a total scam and shut down? Even Omaze, the charity sweepstakes company, got exposed as a scam and had to shut down in the US? Or back in the day, there was Mystery Brand. You remember Mystery Brand? So Mystery Brand is a website where you purchase different boxes with chances of winning things. Take, for example, this women's Christmas box. It costs $15 to open and you can win the most expensive Los Angeles realty. But you can't even click it, okay? It doesn't even give you more information, but apparently it's worth $250 million. I love that you can't click it. Like, they're just like, trust us. There's a $250 million house with your name on it. Hey, at least Mr. Beast never wanted to work with this obvious scam. I mean, at least Mr. Beast's manager never went on some podcast and talked about how Mr. Beast really wanted to work with this company. No, what's this? Is there anything you've had to say no to? Um, yeah, tons. Uh, yeah, so a uh, good example. 
So it was about three years or two and a half years ago when I started working with Jimmy, what was becoming really popular were these like mystery loot crate, like internet mm -hmm. sites where you, it's basically like CSGO skins, but you'd go on and be like, here's the Supreme box and you'd pay $50 oh, for it. And remember it was yeah, like- Yeah, didn't Rice Rice Gum did. Uh, yeah. Why did a few Paul. people, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they got a lot of hate for that. Right. Jimmy was, um, he wanted to work with that company when he heard about it, because it was a lot of money and we wanted to give that money away in a video. And I, I had to talk him back on it. I was like, listen, we're not, promoting gambling, I think people are gonna see this negatively. Just when you think you know someone, they turn out to be a Logan Paul, crypto zoo, gambling, fake shit on the internet that's going on just for them to make a lot of money, but then your manager has to come, talks you down. What 100% if he ended up promoting that shit, he would have received a lot of backlash for it, and he would have been like, if you go buy a $50 ticket, you would have a chance to win $100,000 and my Tesla and all these things. And he ends up getting millions and millions because each advertising he does, he said it himself that he's getting between two to $4 million from each ad. And do I think after all of this expositions, he's, it's gonna affect his channel, his image? Yes, and also no. Yes, with the majority of creators, majority of people, they're going to know about it, but the dads that, children who they don't really care about these things they watch this whole video they're not going to understand a thing all they understand is subscribe for a cookie and you know they're wishing they will get that cookie or that fortnite skin that mr beast promised them so i would say after 300 million subscribers 80 percent of them are not going to give a shit because they're just going to watch it either way once they run out of netflix series they watch mr beast video because it's intense and it's interesting to them even though it's all fake and is YouTube is going to do anything about this situation? Absolutely not. Promoting gambling to kids? Who cares? Three, he brings hundreds of millions, if not billions of views each month to the platform. You know how much YouTube makes from just Mr. Beast? 100% they're in a contract. They hold hands together. And they're like, Jimmy, you have a free card pass. Do whatever you want. Bring a kit and do shakalaka boom boom in the camera. We don't care. As long as you bring the billions of views on our platform each month, we love you so much and we will be with you, cuddle you until forever and ever. Also, this digital wheel is not remotely representative of your actual odds. Mark Rover has talked about this common deceptive casino tactic before. You recall from the carnival scam video, the most lucrative games for the carnival owner are those where people overestimate their chances of winning. That is exactly what happens in this game, thinking you were so close to getting a jackpot, when in reality, you weren't close at all. In gambling psychology, this is known as the near miss effect, and people will spend much more money to try and win because they think they can just do it on the next one. So I am absolutely pigging out on feastables, um, and I'm trying to do this. Mr. Beast is teaching us gambling? Minus points because there's no cool music. Anyway. Uh, let's gamble. Also, these tickets, one of them just so happened to go to a YouTuber with 700,000 subscribers at the time. Just pure chance. This was just taped. It was taped. <gasps> no freaking way. So it is like really t like total chance, obviously. Like you're one of like hundreds of thousands of names. Talk to Jimmy Bell. What do you got to say to Jimmy, say thank then. you for picking us. No, he didn't. It was random. I know. What an absolute shock that the second they opened the chocolate without knowing they were filming it for their YouTube video. They 100% didn't know. It was an absolute shock to them. And another thing I want to point out is anyone who comes in their videos and they're like, Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. They give you this energetic shit. They are the fakest person ever. People like Eric, for example, there's someone in front of the camera, they're a character, off the camera, completely someone else. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna be traveling 90 hours on this planet. It's gonna be so sick. I'm gonna take you through the whole journey. Cut! Fucking hell, so hot in here. Where's the fucking AC? You, get out of my shot, you donkey. In 3, 2, 1, lights, camera, action. Hey guys, today we'll be saving 100 dogs who don't have a home and we'll be giving them a home. It's absolutely fake whoever just overreacts and over exaggerates things. They are not who you think they are and Era got exposed a few months ago for faking his videos as well. The 30 day challenge where he ended up just, it, he got exposed for shooting these videos months, months before. It's just... It, they're not the person you think they are. Mr. Former employee goes on and he says on how Mr. Beast is like, oh, I'm trying to 
promotes healthy things. Obesity is a major problem in this. And then he ends up selling chocolate, with his, which is actually not dietic like Pokimane's cookie. And it actually is promoting obesity. And then he says that he wants healthy uh, community. He wants to share positive things in his community and all in the world. And he ends up having Beast Burger. I don't know how we missed that. He goes on with multiple things as well, which I don't, I'm not going to cover. It's a whole long ass video i'm gonna link it down below it's very detailed if you want to go through it and as most of you are aware mr beast and mr ava's chat logs from discord a few years ago are coming out and accusations and evidence and there's a lot of shit 2024 is just full of surprises and it's absolutely a judgment day for youtube creators everyone's just getting exposed literally and one thing in this community we never get tired of is drama i look forward to what comes next God knows who else is going to get exposed. I look forward to see what happens. Anyways, this was Mr. Beast's image ruined. And it really, I feel like it really affects his image. And it people are going to look at him in different. 100% I look at him differently. And the first 30 seconds of a video, I'm going to click off. The second I see someone that he's been in the same shit. And I'll be questioning everyone. Is this a real person? Or is this whole thing scripted? And another thing I wanted to add is even though Jimmy cares only about money. He's not a selfless person like we all thought he was. He's still doing good for the you know the people the deaf the people in need even though the sponsors pay for it or maybe sometimes he pays for it i'm not really sure but it's still good things that governments are not even doing do i think he needs to be canceled for this no i think he can actually improve from this learn from this experience and actually don't listen to the pr teams or don't listen to his own head at the back of his mind that everything needs to be scripted and all these things bring natural people bring normal people don't rig shit that is absolutely disgusting let people have a real chance in winning and stop bringing influencers and content youtubers whatever in your videos we see them enough on youtube we want to see normal people that's even more interesting even though if you show influencers face youtubers face it's going to get you more views we don't care about that. Show people what they want to see and don't rig it. But let Jimmy make his money. Even if he fakes it, honestly, I don't care. As long as he's out here helping people in need, I think that is a very beautiful thing for, you know, Mr. Beast. We talked all about the bad things, but also the good things, even though it was not like from his own pocket. But it doesn't matter. People who are in need got the help that they needed and i think that's a very beautiful thing that mr beast is doing he can easily just go make normal shitty ass content touring around in europe barking at people but no he's making videos helping people and giving money to the people anyways i just want to talk about this and one thing i like to say before i leave is there are five hundred thousand million dogs and cats in the world who need a home by pressing that subscribe button Every single one of them are going to find a home and they're going to live a happy, healthy, long life. All it takes you is to press that subscribe. Yeah, you know how it works. Press that subscribe, like, whatever it is. Take it for yourself. I'll see you at the next one.